Many of you have probably looked at the Unreal Engine roadmap and have glanced down to the PCG section and have seen this video and have thought, wow, that would be so awesome to have sometime in the future. But what if I told you, you can have this right now. I've actually recreated this functionality currently in 5.3 with a few simple tweaks. I'm going to show you guys two different setups for real time PCG. One of them is the forest type scenario. And the second is a, a more unique use of real time that will demonstrate some of the current issues with real time PCG. So you're not going to want to miss that. So let's jump into the similar one that is like the one they showed off in their demo. So here we are in this environment and all it is is two unique PCG graphs, one on one side, one on the other side. And I have this archway that is just there to basically to simulate sort of like the scenario where they have I'm running through arches and it's reloading the environment. So same thing here. So right now, all it's doing is when a character goes through this, it triggers the regeneration on this. Now, how is this set up? So on this blueprint, all it's doing is checking that once I overlap it, it is just doing a, an event dispatcher to call out to any PCG out there in the entire environment to go ahead and update. And I've noticed it was triggering twice for some reason. So in this case, I just did a do once. And then once I've stopped overlapping it, it goes ahead and resets it. So for the trees, all I do is on begin play, I get all the doorways in the entire environment. And I create a simple custom event that goes ahead and just swaps a bool around from true and false. And I also generate a random seed and then I force the PCG to regenerate. And the PCG graph is also very simple. You can see here is just taking a spline sampler, moving some points around, making sure there's nothing overlapping. And then based on this props bool that I have piped into a branch node, it is going to go ahead and output one static spawner or the other static spawner. And so what this results in is when I go in here, I can run through this and each time it will generate a new seed and it will actually also swap between them. So the functionality, as you could see, is already here. We can already do this real time as much as we'd like. Now, I did mention there are some issues with real time PCG, and I want to show you that in the second environment. But if you're enjoying the content so far, consider hitting the like button and subscribing for more awesome tutorials like this. Let's get back to it. So in this environment, I actually have two cubes and in one we have a simple cube where if I run up to it, it will regenerate. But all it's doing is around me, it is removing all the pieces. As long as I'm within it, it is removing them every second. So I can run out and there it regenerates and I can run in and it will again cut it out. But it is flashing. Now it is flashing in this one. But if I go over to this one, on this one, it is actually not flashing. You can see it is cutting it out, but it is not flashing. And you can see it is not cutting it out at the exact same time all around and you can see I can run out of here and again, it will regenerate. So the reason is on this one, it is one large, just volume of cubes. And on this one, it is separated out and you can see the bounding box that I have here is actually slightly larger than the actual cubes. So I trigger the box and that triggers the actual regeneration of it. But one thing to note is if I was to make this larger and then I ran inside of this one, you can see it is cutting away, but you can see there's a huge flash there. During that split second, when it is actually regenerating itself, all that light actually escapes and comes back inside. And you can see it when it's such a large piece, and you have real time lighting set up, it causes issues. But if I was to go ahead and just do the same thing on this guy, I take all of these and I increase the size of, size of these, right? And I make him larger. And now I go in through this one, the same exact blueprint, but in this one, it is actually only regenerating the ones around me. And because of that, we're able to have a better scenario where it still flashes a little bit, but because it doesn't let the outside light in, it doesn't have that super strong flash. So this is just something to keep in mind when you're dealing with regenerating PCG and maybe a tight scenario where you have a light leak potentially in the actual environment. So it might be better in your specific case to have more compact small ones instead of having a larger one. Now as to how this one is set up, this one's actually quite a bit simpler. This one just uses a PCG graph and a box volume. So this is using this simple box collision. And then the way the PCG graph is set up is it uses the box collision size 
as the volume where it's spawning the points. This doubles as the trigger and it doubles as the location for the points. Now begin overlap. All I'm doing is casting the player. I'm basically setting a timer that when this is turned on, when I'm inside the volume, go ahead and just regenerate the PCG graph every one second. If you did this every frame, this would be very expensive. But of course, you can tweak the timing on this as much as you need. And then when I leave the bo uh, box, I go ahead and clear that timer. And I then give myself a little bit of a delay. And then I regenerate it one more time. So that way, once I'm outside of it far enough, I can go ahead and just regenerate it and I'm not blocking any walls, so it'll regenerate completely. But if I stay right at the edge of the wall, of course, I'll still have the final cutout. So it's not a perfect system in this case, but it was just a demonstration of how to actually use the system. And the PCG graph for this, again, is very simple. It is just using the volume sampler. And all I'm doing is modifying the bounds of the points. So that way I have control. I'm just setting them to be exactly 100 by 100 and I'm cutting out my character from it. So I get the actor data from all world actors, in my case, of the third person character, and I enabled uh, multiple when I was doing it, but this is not required. And then I'm setting the points on him to be quite large, and then I'm cutting it out and then spawning the cubes. Now, all it is is just the default cube, and I've just scaled it up by 2.5 size, so that way there's less cubes in the entire environment. Now, one thing to note is because I'm using the actor data of third person, I have actually added a box collision here. Again, it is using this volume to generate the points around me. This is how it knows. It's not going off the actual character, it's going off this box. So this way I have just a larger area around me when it is going inside of the area where it actually thinks I should cut out the actual points around. And this project is going to be available on the Patreon as always, where you can join these lovely people here in supporting what I do. And I really appreciate you guys for it. Or if you just have questions about what you saw today or in general, come join our community. The links to the Discord are down below. So come hang out and say hi. So while this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to recreate this, Hopefully this is enough information, but if you'd like, we can go step by step and do something a little more advanced than this. And if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out the PCG building series where I go ahead and start creating a full building out of just PCG.